Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. One of the biggest stories coming into this season, probably the biggest story in the NBA season this year is going to be centered on LeBron James and the Lakers and him playing with Bronny James. And then probably a, a close second is going to be the J.J. Redick uh, story with him and the uh, what is it with the Los Angeles Lakers being that this is his first time coaching uh, an NBA team. So we know this is going to be a big uh, talking line. The media made a big deal, out, made a big deal out of it in media day. We even saw Bronny. And LeBron, when they were speaking, I believe, to Spectronet, uh, and they were talking, and, you know, there's a lot of hype. A lot of LeBron fans were excited about it, et cetera, et cetera. So what happened? Bronny goes out there. His first game, he scores zero, uh, two points, right? Two points. He didn't play well at all. Uh, and he had a chase down block that the media was now plastering all over the internet, making it seem like, oh, my God, this is incredible. You had LeBron fans, some of them losing their damn minds under the, in the comment sections on some of the social media posts talking about block by a James. I remember where I saw that one before. Like, LeBron fans were basically lathering up, man, lathering up, slapping each other with honey, just basically hollering and screaming, disturbing the peace, twerking all over the place, basically gyrating. Uh, so that happened. And then... I knew that the Lakers were going to play a second game in preseason. I think preseason games are usually five games, if I'm not mistaken. And I got some word yesterday that LeBron and AD were expected to play. So I was like, okay, this would be interesting. So I actually caught the game, I believe, somewhere in the second quarter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I caught the game in the second quarter against the Phoenix Suns. And I think the Lakers had a lead. No, as a matter of fact, they did have the lead. And then as I tuned in, who did I see? I saw LeBron James there, and I saw Bronny James there. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, yo, this is pretty cool. Like, damn, like LeBron and his son. I'm, pre- I'm I'm just watching the dynamic. LeBron is on one side of the court. LeBron is on the other side of the court. And I'm like, I wonder what must, what must be going through LeBron's mind. And it's obviously, he's probably engaged in the game and all of that. But he must be aware. Obviously, he's aware that his son is on the basketball court. So I was watching that. Um, at one point, he tried to set him up for a shot, but Bronny missed and all that. So I watched that. Then I caught a little bit of the second half and the Lakers were winning, right? They were winning. Kevin Durant was not playing well at all, right? He was not playing well at all. So the Lakers were winning that game. So I go to bed because I thought the Lakers were going to win the game. I thought uh, head coach JJ Redick finally got his first, uh, what is it? He finally got his first W, uh, although it was a preseason game, nevertheless, he got his first W. So I woke up and I'm like, I'm seeing people talk about eight turnovers, this, and I'm like, wait, what are they talking about? The Lakers won the game. So I quickly search on NBA.com, look at the box score, and I see that the Lakers lost the game 118 and 114. I'm like, how the hell did they lose the game? And then I started looking into the the box score, and I'm like, wait, LeBron and Bronny James had eight turnovers. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So so before we even get into the box score, I want to put up an image. Where did I see this image? I want to put up an image that I saw on, yeah, I think it was, Dunk Central, right? The NBA Dunk Central, and they put up this post. And I want to show it to you guys. It says, Bronny and LeBron James. Bronny James, zero points, two rebounds, zero assists. LeBron James, 19 points, uh, five rebounds, four assists, and they show the box score. And under that, LeBron fans were pretty much going crazy, talking about, oh, my God, they love it, they love it. Some but other people are like, bro, this is terrible. So you saw the box score. Now I want to, uh, the, 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 what is it, the graphic that they put up. Now, I want to actually go to the box score this game. So, looking at the box score, LeBron obviously is LeBron, so he scored 16 points on 66% shooting, 100% shooting from the floor, uh, excuse me, from the free throw line, getting you five rebounds, four assists, two blocks, but he did have two turnovers. But that's different. LeBron has the ball in his hand. It's a preseason, knocking off some rust and all of that. Let's look at Bronny James. Bronny James, and by the way, it was his birthday. He scored 13, excuse me, he played 13 and a half minutes. He attempted one shot, made zero shots. Uh, He got, what, two rebounds, zero assists, zero blocks, but he did have four turnovers. That four turnovers is the problem and is why people are flaming, uh, flaming the two of them. If LeBron has four turnovers, that's one thing, right? But if Bronny is having four turnovers, excuse me, as a rookie, that is a problem. And very soon, some people are going to start asking the question, why is Bronny playing at all? Why is Bronny James playing at all? That's the first thing. The second thing, I want to get to something I was thinking about 
just yesterday. Man, this is going to be a rough season for LeBron, Bronny, Laker fans. It's y- y'all are in for a uh, it's going to be y'all it's going to be it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a painful season for you guys based on how things are starting off. Okay. First of all, whoever is behind the promotion of Bronny James constantly on social media and all of these networks and all these podcasts. I looked up in my phone today. I saw even the BBC was posting about it. LeBron and his son playing together. They are setting this kid up for some serious failure. Serious failure. And all of the people that are up there hyping up Bronny, talking about Bronny, this, bro, bro y'all are, y'all are, son, yo, son is looking like ass right now. Like, let's keep it a hunt. Son is looking like ass right now. Like, 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 just call, let's just call it what it is. If that was any other, any other player, be like, yo, son is ass. And he will probably not even make it on the field. Uh, uh, excuse me, on the court. But some of y'all are just up there twerking it up all over the place, slapping each other with honey, hollering and screaming because you love LeBron. So, well, LeBron's son must be good. Bro, y'all need to stop because Bron- Bronny is going to be the one that ends up getting the short end of the stick at the end of all of this. Because, I mean, it, it it's only two games in. It's only two games in. And I don't want to say people are roasting him. I think people are calling it, calling exactly what they see if Bronny was getting buckets and balling out of control, then people be like, yo, son is nice. But the way that he's being hyped, like, oh, he's some great defender and all that, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. We're not talking about Gary Payton Jr. here who can actually defend, who's an athlete. Like, he can ball. I don't see any of that going on over here. But nevertheless, you guys keep hyping it up and hyping it up. I think they're setting up Bronny for some serious failure. That's the first thing. The second thing is how this affects LeBron because LeBron is going to have to mitigate this situation at at one point. I expect LeBron to be more active on social media this year, responding to things that critics say, because you better believe when they actually have some TNT games and you having people like Charles Barkley and all of them saying like, he's not any good. LeBron is definitely going to be in his feelings, but they're going to be calling it like they see it. We're not going to lie for you guys because we don't do it for any other player in the NBA. So we're not we're not doing it for especially as a rookie. You have that aspect of it. And then you have the aspect of JJ Redick, the most arrogant guy in the NBA. JJ Redick is going to be humbled this season because it's one thing to talk and be speaking all of that long grammar that he likes to speak to impress I don't know who. That is not going to save you if you cannot produce. It ain't gonna save you. In my, in my current uh, 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 my current opinion right now is that the Lakers, with every passing day, are looking like the 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 the, the sideshow of the NBA. They're looking like a legitimate clown show right now. If you weigh those three factors, which are Bronny James even playing, who is not qualified to be playing. You have the fact that LeBron James is going to be in the middle of it and he's going to have to defend his son this season. And then you have the fact that you have a J.J. Redick who I don't believe is going to be as good as some people were saying, oh, he's going to be the next Pat Riley. The Lakers believe he could be Pat Riley. Like, all right. And then I'm also hearing rumblings that, uh, uh, what is it, Anthony Davis is not is not buying into some of that mumbo jumbo, that long grammar that J.J. Redick be spewing all over the table. That Anthony Davis is not impressed by JJ's analytics and all of that. He's not impressed with him. It's going to be a disaster. When I say a, di- a disaster, if things don't turn around. And I think the Lakers are going to regret the decisions they made in the offseason if it continues like this. Because once the season starts and the national media starts really paying attention to this and the people that have the courage to actually call what they're seeing... They start weighing in on it. It's, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. I think what the Lakers need to do is send Bronny to the G League so you remove him out of your equation so he's no longer a distraction and a talking point. You have him there. Then they need to focus on their season and really give J.J. Redick a chance to really coach this team. Because as it stands right now, it looks like a total clown show. Was it nice for LeBron and the Sun to have a moment? Yes, but the, the, that is like a momentary thing. You see it one time, you see it two times, we've seen it a hundred times. Now it's like, okay, can we get to, to the basketball? 
and the news organizations that are promoting this, you guys are debasing yourselves. And y'all are losing a lot of credibility in the process of doing this. This is just my opinion. You guys are promoting sensationalism and nonsense. There is no substance here. Because it's not like as if Bronny is productive. He is not productive. So for you guys to be promoting him the way that you are, I think that reflects poorly on you as well. LeBron has been losing his damn mind on Twitter over the past 24 to 48 hours. He's been hollering and screaming uh, and basically responding to everybody, whether it's Brian Scalabrini saying that he basically destroys the reputations of his teammate. He jumped on Twitter, responded to that. Then he jumped on Twitter to also respond to a, a, a report by Ramona Shelburne of ESPN basically saying that he, these, LeBron also admired what the Lakers did with Kobe Bryant, and that's one of the reasons that he went there, and LeBron quickly took to Twitter where he basically shot down those claims. And in the midst of all of this, I've been hearing various creators and people send me messages on Instagram like, yo, LeBron got all of this energy. He can respond to Ramona Shelburne. He can respond to Brian Scalabrini. But why didn't he or why hasn't he responded to Shale Sonnen yet? Now, for those of you who don't know, Shale Sonnen is a former, I believe, MMA fighter, and he also works at ESPN. And he was one of the people that went out there and made a pretty, pretty, pretty damaging claim against LeBron James that basically LeBron is using PEDs, right? He said it. And Shale Sonnen has been saying this on multiple occasions. He said it on multiple shows. He even said it on the PBD podcast, doubling down on it, saying that he knows LeBron uses something and they share the same guy in terms of the person that he gets all of those PEDs. This is Shale Sonnen, right? So what we would like to do, for those of you who didn't hear him talking about this, on multiple occasions and doubling down on multiple occasions, we want to play a quick compilation of Shale Sonnen making this damaging claim against LeBron James over the last few years. So what we want to do now is want to play exactly what Shale Sonnen had to say here, and then want to come back and continue on. Take a listen to him here. Yeah, bigger, stronger, faster in that order. But they got some performance enhancers. Like, if the world understood what LeBron did, like, other basketball players will hear what LeBron does and go, well, well, yeah, but that doesn't matter, right? You're, it's like a baseball player. You're hitting a stick out of the way. It doesn't matter. It's like, no, no, no. If you knew what these performance enhancers did, then you would know why it does matter. What you do know, you think there's, he's there's doing? There's only one. We have, we have the same drug guy, if you will. I know exactly what he's doing. But there's only one golfer. Please tell. There's only one golfer. I'm not going to. But there's, there's only one golfer that follows the big three. And the big three is EPO, growth hormone, testosterone. That's the Lance Armstrong diet. There's one golfer, but it's Tiger Woods. Like, yes, it does matter. People will say it all the time. It doesn't matter. John Daly won it. It's like, it, it matters. Trust me that it matters. EPO matters. It's the reason LeBron takes it. It matters. Hmm. And if other basketballs what understood what it do? did, EPO increases your red blood cells which gives you endurance so you can play all game long. You can shoot in the fourth more quarter red blood just cells, like you more shot oxygen in the fourth in your red blood yes. cells. Okay, yes. got you. Got you. It, it's the king of performance enhancers. When I was a sophomore in high school and Suzanne Summers wrote a book that was separated by like three months and they both told the truth. Sylvester Stallone said, hey, there's something out there called human growth hormone. In other countries, it sits on the shelves. I several times have driven across the border into Mexico. I just walked in the pharmacy and grabbed it. Here in America, you can't get it come hook or crook, and that will be different. In 30 years, when people finally realize, do what I've already realized, you will be able to get it. This was just a claim he made. I mean, I'm just going back all this time, and I remember him saying it. It was a very honorable thing that Stallone did, and he wants to go out and put out pictures and videos and show himself lifting weights. That's very honorable. Because he's telling us what he's doing. And if that inspires you or something you'd like to do, you can now follow his recipe and have a reasonable expectation that you get somewhere to those same gains. I think there's an honor in that. And when I brought up to Andrew Schultz about the EPO and LeBron James, I, I just bring that to you. I, I'm not putting down LeBron. There's 10 guys that do it. Like, that has separated itself. I mean, I only know one golfer that's on the diet. And I'm talking about the big three. I'm talking about boost your test. IGF-1, which means growth hormone, EPO. I only know one golfer. All of golf. I only know ever in the history of golf. All the way back to, remember that Lee Trevino, the great? I only know one golfer. But they call him Tiger. Because this stuff works.
And it also is legal. The three that I just said are legal. It's the John Cena approach. Tell people I've never taken a thing. Well, he says that because he's never taken anything illegal. He just happens to know a secret that so many others don't, which is you can get prescribed these medications. And I was just speaking to the power of the medication. I'll, I'll leave you with one final thought. And yeah. I've seen you on Jim Rome, and you're like, LeBron, he's a bitch. Yes. LeBron's a dork. He is you a call dork. Okay. Yes. What, what's your beef with LeBron? There was a guy that turned out to be a very nice guy, but he was like getting this, this credit for being a badass. Ray Lewis. Yeah, that's Ray Lewis. Who it was. Well, UM, Ravens. He's yes. a Hall of Fame linebacker. Well, and then I ended up meeting him. He was a yeah. very nice guy. Yeah. But... Yes, at the time I was building some fight, and I called. I called him. Why did you call LeBron a dork, him. though? Well, what did LeBron do? Le LeBron had done something to me, um, and he he was coming to UFC fights, and he wasn't doing autographs, and it was it was just one of these things that that rubbed me the wrong way. And he and I have one thing in common: we, we use the same drug dealer to buy our EPO, <laughs> and I don't see anything wrong with that. Like. There's performance enhancing drugs, and they'll come out and try to tell you those are bad. Things. Performance and enhancing are good terms. You can pin that on me all you want. If there's something out there that can make you better, I'm not going to lie about it like a lot of other people are. And it, it was a big deal. It's like the Bronx. <laughs> to explain where you got, you got to understand, I grew up through the Hulk Hogan era. Like, I mean, I'm taking my vitamins and I'm doing my push ups every night and I'm flexing in the mirror for 10 years and I can't put on any muscle. <laughs> like, Paul, why didn't you say you were taking anabolic steroids? Like, just, I did the prayers, I did the vitamins. I would have done the steroids. Yeah. Why didn't you yeah. include that? Well, because he would give speeches <laughs> at like, least in 10 years. You, you guys, <laughs> take your vitamins, <laughs> kids. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, <laughs> is that actually, is there validity to your story with the same drug dealer? Is that Actually, yes. accurate straight for, for up specific, yeah, but it's a wonderful drug. See, this is what, <laughs> but guys, it, it's good, it's a legal medicine. There's I mean, that's, boy. One, that's one of the things, it's a legal med Now, you can ban it in sports, and there's different rules, but I'm sharing with you like this is what Lance Armstrong did. So, you heard what Shale Sonnen had to say. Do you know, as of recent, a NBA top 75 legend came out and say, said, while speaking to Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett said, LeBron James on that new Balco. That's what KG said. He on that new Balco juice. And we did a story about that. I heard nothing about from LeBron on Twitter from that. So, you have Shell Sonnen making all these allegations about you. You don't say anything to Shell Sonnen. But nevertheless, you have the energy to subliminally respond to Kwame Brown, uh, respond to Brian Scalabrini, and respond to Ramona Shelburne. But when it comes time to respond to something as serious and as damaging as that, we can't find you. Where are all the tweets? Where are all the tweets? We cannot find you. And as I, I think, as I mentioned earlier, Shale Sonnen was, uh, let me see, Shale Sonnen. Let me see, ESPN. I know he works at ESPN. I wonder if he still works at ESPN. Based on my knowledge, uh, he still works at ESPN. I've not heard him, let me see, ESPN fired. I don't believe he's been fired. Uh, Shale Sonnen has not been fired by ESPN. I believe he still works with ESPN, which is the LeBron James Network, which then makes one begin to ponder the following question. Given the fact that ESPN is the LeBron James Network, and Shale Sonnen said this, why hasn't ESPN let go of Shale Sonnen? Do you think that if they let go of him, that there's a risk that Shale Sonnen could sue ESPN and then actually reveal who this person is? Because if he's leveraging, levying, excuse me, such a damaging claim against LeBron James, one would think that they were parted ways with him a long time ago, but he still works there, to the best of my knowledge. So how is he still able to work there and then make those claims about LeBron James? How is that possible? And more importantly, if you are LeBron James and you have somebody making such a egregious claim against you on multiple occasions, you don't respond to him, but nevertheless, you find the energy to respond to Ramona Shelburne. Now, some people will say, well, well, the reason he's not responding to Shale Sonnen is because, well, it's not true. And why would you bother responding to something that's not true? Well, then basically by your, your own admission, you're basically saying that so LeBron responding to Ramona Shelburne's report and responding to Brian Scalabrini saying that he destroys his teammates legacies and Russell Westbrook. You're saying that is true. That's why he decided to respond to it. There is no answer to it. When you approach this situation with logic, you guys cannot run away from the truth from logic. It's going to betray you. If you approach this situation with logic and critical thinking, you will know that 
There's a reason LeBron is not responding to it. And I think the reason has nothing to do with whether or not it's true. I don't think LeBron is not responding to Shale Sonnen because it's not true. I think LeBron is choosing to not respond to him because he doesn't want to draw attention to himself. Because if he draws attention to himself, people may start doing some digging and say, what's going on here? And if people start doing some digging, they may find something. So what he does is he acts like as if he didn't even, he doesn't even know what's going on. He doesn't even understand what's going on. A lot of people have been talking about when LeBron and P. Diddy, oh, the bit about LeBron, but why don't LeBron say that? Why, why would he? Why isn't any other celebrity? Because they don't want people to draw attention to them. So I personally believe that the reason he chose is rather is choosing not to respond to Shale Sonnen is because that he knows if he does that, it will really bring a microphone into that situation. And people was also saying, whoa, you hear what LeBron is saying? And then some people say, what is, what's going on here? Let me Google this quickly and figure it out. And then you start here. And then people say, wait, is LeBron on something? No, LeBron, LeBron knows this. You think his PR team and all these guys on? Of course they know this. So this is we're going to act like we didn't even hear it. We're going to act like we didn't even hear it. But we're going to respond to Ramona Shelburne and all of these other frivolous claims. And LeBron fans, there's no way for you guys to run away from this. Because again, logic betrays you. Logic betrays you. LeBron, a LeBron fan will say the reason LeBron is not responding to it is because it's not true. And then a, a person that can process issues properly will then respond and say, okay, so if it's not true, that means that when he does respond to these other things, that means that's true. And then you run out of honey and it's over. So I find it to be quite peculiar that LeBron has found the energy and a wherewithal to respond to all of these other claims. But Shell Sonnen, it looks like he's running and hiding from him. And Shell Sonnen not only says he knows what LeBron is doing, he said they got the same guy. So what I personally believe is LeBron will never respond to him. Because if he does, Shell Sonnen has it out for LeBron. I think it's something he disrespected his wife or something like that. Something like that. And if you disrespect a man's wife, ha, <laughs> good luck. Good luck trying to get forgiveness from that guy. That's one of the lines you don't cross. You never disrespect a man's wife and think you're going to walk away scot-free. Oh, it ain't going to happen. And if he has that type of vendetta against LeBron James, this means that Shale Sonnen could basically talk about LeBron when it comes to these allegations with, 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 basically, with, with basically nothing to worry about because he knows LeBron will never say something. But I do find it interesting that LeBron is running and hiding from Shale Son and running and hiding from those allegations. You had some people that came out there and then tried to deploy various distraction tactics by basically saying, because what, what they tried to do was the following. They said, okay, there are these rumors surrounding LeBron James. So what did the Gilbert Arenas and all of these guys try to do? They did what normal LeBron fans do. They deflect. They change the question. They start saying, instead of addressing that, they'll say, well, Michael Jordan, well, he was bald, so he must have been on something. That's what they do. That's what they do. Even though you can see a clear decline in Michael Jordan's game as he got older, especially his athleticism. That's what they did. The other day, we put up a poll just to show you how LeBron fans deflect. The question was, should the Laker fans, should Laker fans and the media scrutinize J.J. Redick as much as they did Darvin Ham? I want to read you some quick responses of what some LeBron fans said. Hear this one. Are the Lakers the only team you cover? That's a LeBron fan. Another one I can't even find that comment. They got drowned out. They probably, they probably, uh, they probably um, two piece them in the comment section. Oh, what do you mean should they? Now all of a sudden they can't read proper English. They don't understand what English means. You and everyone else will regardless because they're the Lakers. You beef with LeBron and you feel the need for a GOAT debate 52 weeks out of the year. Like I said, the other weeks. Don't try to pimp me. This is a LeBron fan. I know the game. Roll the next hater videos as per usual. So basically, they didn't answer the question. They'll just deflect. They'll start talking about the price of tea in China. They'll start talking about what they saw on Netflix last night. That's what they do. They'll just deflect. And I'm sure people, when they start seeing this video he's going to get a few comments oh another LeBron hate video oh no support for a black man 
blah, 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 blah. Just a bunch of deflections. But the question, LeBron fans, you need to ask yourself is, for as active as LeBron is on Twitter with his Twitter fingers, why hasn't he addressed Shale Sonnen? Why hasn't even why hasn't he even sued him for defamation? If somebody's saying something as egregious as that, like that, you could get sued for that. Why? Why we ain't never heard none? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, LeBron fans, I know what you guys think. Deep, deep, deep in your hearts that you're afraid of. We all know. I suggest you guys keep quiet when it comes to this goat debate, because y'all got something to be worried about. Ben Simmons, that damn Ben Simmons, decided to crawl back from whatever hole he was sitting under to jump out there in the floor and start flapping his gums, talking about, oh, man, y'all must have forgot. They must have forgot. They don't know. They don't play. They don't They must have forgot. They must have forgot. And then you got, their, you got them there interviewing him on media day you got the interviewer reaching across the table reaching across the the what is it his partner to shake his hand i'm like why you want to shake ben simmons hands for what you want to shake his hands when you reaching across him to shake why you want to shake ben simmons hands next thing you know you shake his hands you're gonna be missing two weeks of work because ben you caught you, you caught the ben simmons flu or whatever the hell ben simmons got so what happened y'all know i think ben simmons is a total time waster I never take Ben Simmons seriously. And it seems like the entire NBA community has finally caught on to Ben Simmons' act, which is all he does is sit out there and drop mixtapes over the summertime. So you're like, what are the mixtapes? You know the mixtapes of him shooting jumpers and all of that. And then, then come the, the NBA season, Ben Simmons shoot a jumper. We can't even find dude. We can't even find. Ben Simmons out there just doing cardio. Just doing cardio. So what happened? I'm going through the internet. And I come across a post on NBA Central featuring one of the most outspoken NBA players and none other than Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly is there speaking to his co-host on the show that he has, I think the Patrick Beverly podcast, and he asks him about Ben Simmons. The second, the moment the, the his host asks him about Ben Simmons, he just started to basically, he, I mean, he just started, he just started to manhandle Ben Simmons, talking about that dude is a joker and a clown and all of that, basically saying what all of us already think. So what we want to do is want to play exactly what Patrick Beverly had to say about his interaction with Ben Simmons, and then want to come back and react his comments. Take a listen to Patrick Beverly talking about that damn Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons coming out with some new workout tapes. Ben Simmons. Hey, ben, ain't nobody trying to hear that. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. I ain't trying to hear that. I'm over here and I ain't trying to hear that. You got to show us, buddy. And you got to show us for at least 60 some games, buddy. We ain't on that. I ain't trying to hear that. Nah. No more talking. No videos on the court. I need to see it. He was like, people forgot I was a pretty good basketball player, right? Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> that corny ass that day. Yeah. I go to a free throw line. Hey, what the are they booing the shit out of you? Hey, they booing me? I thought they was booing you. Ah. Huh? <laughs> that corny ass or whatever. So already, they must be booing you. I corny ass. <laughs> gotta show me, buddy. But when he play, he be hooping. He just gotta play, and he can't be ducking that smoke. He can't be ducking that smoke. If the, the lights get big, you gotta get big with the light. Can't be ducking that. Shit. Leave you open. I ain't saying shoot ten threes. I ain't saying shoot threes all the time. But my <laughs> pack the game. So you heard what Patrick Beverly had to say. I 100% agree with his description of Ben Simmons. That's number one. Number two, did you hear the story that Patrick Beverly told? He said he was at the free throw line and he was like, yo, son, why they booing you like that? And then Ben Simmons looks over at Patrick Beverly and goes, oh, 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 I, I, I thought they were booing you. I, th I thought they were booing you. That's what Balenciaga Ben had to say. Who gave him that name? Mace. Mace calls Ben Simmons Balenciaga Ben. You had Jeff Teague over there talking about Ben Simmons ain't going to fool me again. You got Shaquille O'Neal going talking about Ben Simmons just wasting everybody's time. Ben Simmons is not serious. As a matter of fact, I want to hip y'all to the sheer nonsense, the lunacy that came out of this dude's mouth just, I believe it was just in the past 24 hours. And I got this quote. I want to say I got it from NBA Central. It, I mean, it just it's only Ben Simmons can say something like this. Let me see where I found this bloody post at, okay? Because Ben Simmons, oh, here we go. I want to show it to you guys. On October 5th, 
Here, here you go, here you go, here you go. Via the, via the New York Post. I feel physically ready to play at a high level. Man, sit your ass down. You feel phys... Ben Simmons has been feeling physically ready to play at a high level for the past two years. If you go back to his 2023 presser, he was saying virtually the exact same things in that presser that he's saying now. That he's saying now. So the question now becomes... Okay, now that we're speaking about Ben Simmons, unfortunately, what can we expect from Ben Simmons? Well, some of the people around him, some of the people from his camp are saying that they expect Ben Simmons to be an all or excuse me, return to all star form. Well, let's go over Ben Simmons numbers when he was an all star. When Ben Simmons was an all star, he was averaging 17 a game on 56 percent shooting, shooting 60 percent from the free throw line. Eight, getting you damn near nine rebounds a game, 7.8 assists per, 7.7 assists per game, while getting you two, what, no, 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 while getting you 1.4 steals, and in the following season has similar numbers. For me, and I think for the rest of the NBA community to take Ben Simmons seriously, we're going to be looking at his production, and we're going to be looking at his aggressiveness. Is Ben Simmons being aggressive? I was watching some highlights from Ben Simmons, I think about a week or so ago, of when he was a Philadelphia 76er. And you can see the actual aggression in his basketball game. You can see it. He was a much more aggressive player. Much more aggressive. But if Ben Simmons comes back and averages 9 points, 10 points, and 7 rebounds, I'm going to be like, yo, this, is, this dude is wasting everybody's time. And I think it's also important to point out that Ben Simmons is slated to earn $40 million this year. I'll repeat it once more. Ben Simmons is getting paid $40 million. Now, some of y'all be like, damn, how he get it? The reason Ben Simmons is getting paid that because he got a max contract. He got a max contract from the Philadelphia 76ers. Hear this well. So at this point in his career, he was slated to be earning $40 million. Now, why would they pay him that much? Because they were paying him based off of whatever they thought his future production was going to be based off of what they were seeing at the present moment. And at the present moment, when he had that contract, basically he was averaging 16 a game, okay, shooting 58% from the field, 62% from the free throw line while getting you eight rebounds, eight assists, uh, 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 and basically 2.1 steals a game. Now Ben Simmons is Mr. Triple Single. So if he ain't putting up those type of numbers, I don't want to hear about it. 